both third grade students and families. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to week 12, lesson one for the week of June 1st through the 5th. This video is to support schools using the Bridges Math program. My name is Ms. Greenwood, and today is all about understanding the relationship between perimeter and area. Materials to support today's learning include pencils and scrap paper. Let's get our learning on. Objective. Students will solve problems involving perimeter and area in order to understand the relationship between the two measurements. Think about it. Study the two images below. How are perimeter and area the same? Perhaps you are thinking about how both are measurements involving two-dimensional shapes that can be used to solve real-life problems. We can create and draw models when working with area and perimeter. How are they different? Area and perimeter are different because area involves calculating square units, while perimeter involves calculating linear units. We will explore the similarities and differences with perimeter and area more in this lesson. Let's suppose you invite nine friends to your backyard for an outdoor lunch. You have picnic tables and chairs to arrange seating for 10 people. Imagine that a single tile is a picnic table. How many people could sit around one such picnic table if each person needs a chair or one linear unit of space? A small square picnic table sits for people. Each side of the square represents the sitting place for one person. So we now know that one picnic table or tile will seat four people. This is not enough to seat 10 people. So imagine that two picnic tables or tiles are pushed together. How many linear units or chairs would fit around two square tiles that are pushed together? What would be your prediction? Let's find out. Here are two picnic tables or tiles pushed together. Let's count and mark the linear units around the two picnic tables. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six linear units would fit around two square tiles pushed together. Let's think back on this. One table seats four people and two tables pushed together seat six people. Why, with twice as many tables, do we not have twice as many linear units fitting around them? What happened to those two extra linear units that maybe some of us were expecting to see? When the two squares got pushed together, two of those red linear units had to go because that's where the squares are touching. It's like you had to take away one linear unit from each tile so that you could put two of them together. Instead of four plus four, it's four minus one plus four minus one, which is the same as three plus three. And that's why we get six linear units and not eight. So in this real life situation of an outdoor lunch, if we push two tables together, two friends would be squeezed out. So we still need more seating to accommodate the 10 people. Now I'm wondering, what if we push three tables together? What if we pushed four tables together? Let's find out how many linear units would fit around these group of tables. Let's start with three tables pushed together. Now let's find the number of linear units going around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, this is interesting. So when we added an additional square tile or table, we're noticing an increase of two linear units. We need 10 linear units in order to seat the 10 people. So let's see how many linear units will fit around four tables pushed together. One, two, three, four tables are now pushed together. Let's count linear units. One, two, three, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We now have found an arrangement of four tables pushed together that will accommodate seating 10 people. Our learning target today is focused on understanding the relationship between the two measurements, area and perimeter. We can measure rectangles by using both area and perimeter. Remember that area is the amount of space that a rectangle covers, like a carpet. Perimeter is used to measure the distance around a rectangle, like a fence. So far, we have found one arrangement of tiles or tables in order to seat 10 people around. How many different arrangements of tiles can be found that have a perimeter of 10 linear units? When we keep the perimeter the same, in this case, 10 linear units, our next question becomes, what happens to the area or the amount of space each arrangement will take when we keep that perimeter the same? We will use the Pattern Shapes Math app to explore how we can use tiles to model a variety of other table arrangements that would seat 10 people. So we now know that when we push four square tiles together, we can seat 10 people around these four tables. And we have equations here to model that thinking. We're going to use the square pattern shape and we're going to explore are there other ways we can arrange the table where we can seat 10 people. So I'm now going to kind of play with this idea of putting four tables together in another way. So you'll notice that now, instead of having one row of four, I have two rows of two. And I'm gonna use the pen tool with the straight line to mark my linear units. So we have a square here. So I know that all four sides are the same length. So each side will have two linear units. So when I count by twos, two, four, six, eight, I know I can seat eight people, but it's not gonna seat the 10 people. So now I wanna kinda of think, how do I want to modify my design? So I'm thinking back and I'm thinking about when we put tables together, we lose a linear unit, right? So if I put another table in each of these two rows, now I don't have a square, I have a rectangle arrangement. The top and bottom sides can seat three people or three linear units and the left and right hand side would seat two people or have two linear units. And we can model this with the equation of two plus two plus three plus three and two plus two is four, three plus three is six, two plus two plus three plus three gives me a total of 10 units. So this would be my equation to justify that this arrangement would seat 10 people. What other arrangements can we find to seat 10 people? Let's continue exploring that. Look at the tile arrangements shown here. The arrangements are different shapes, yet all of them have the same perimeter of 10 linear units. Sometimes different shapes may have the same perimeter, but have different areas. Only four of these arrangements have an area of four square tiles. Can you spot them?
This tile arrangement in the upper right hand corner has an area of six square tiles. We see two rows of three tiles each. Two times three equals six square units. Let's focus on these two designs. Both are two rectangular arrays. An array is an arrangement of equal rows and equal columns. Both of the rectangles have a perimeter of 10 linear units, but since the rectangle on the left has four tiles in one row, it has an area of only four square units. The rectangle on the right has two rows of three tiles, so it has an area of six square units. On the one by four array, there are only three places where tiles get pushed together. On the two by three array, there are seven places where tiles are touching and don't get linear units. So although both arrays end up with the same perimeter, their areas are different. The two by three array covers more space than the one by four array. What different ways might we make a rectangle with a perimeter of 20 linear units? What might the areas be? To get us started, let's create a rectangle starting with one row. We'll keep adding square units and keeping track of linear units until we've created a rectangle where we can seat 20 people around the array. So, we have proven that a 1 by 9 array will equal 20 linear units. 1 plus 1 plus 9 plus 9 equals 20 linear units. You could also put the 1s and 9s together. So 1 plus 1 equals 2 and 9 plus 9 equals 18. 2 and 18 added together equals 20. Since there are two ones and two nines, you could also write the quantity two times one plus the quantity two times nine equals 20 linear units. A one by nine array has an area of nine square units. One row of nine units, or one times nine, equals nine square units. Here are other rectangles with perimeters of 20 linear units. A two by eight array gives us an area of 16 square units. A three by seven array gives us an area of 21 square units. A four by six array gives us an area of 24 square units. And a five by five array gives us an area of 25 square units. Notice that in all five rectangular arrays, we have perimeters equaling 20 linear units around the rectangle. However, the area or amount of space each rectangle covers is different. Find the area and perimeter of each rectangle. Remember, perimeter is the distance around the rectangle. To find the perimeter for this rectangle, we would need to add the linear units of all four sides. 3 plus 3 plus 5 plus 5 gives us a total of 16 linear units. Area is the total amount of space covered by the rectangle. To calculate the area, we can multiply three times five, or think of this as three rows of five units. Three times five equals 15 square units. Now it's your turn to try it. Complete page 205. Read the story problem carefully, then sketch each array in the grid below. 
record the dimensions, perimeter, and area in the chart. Wow, it has been an awesome ride. Goodbye, third grade friends. Take care, stay safe, and stay connected.